Hey everyone, welcome to Tenacious Dev Vlog number 15. So we got a couple of interesting things to point out this time around. Um, so the class-based progression has been reworked quite a bit. So before you had to go into what was known as the old dungeon, and you had to unlock the door with a shard, and then you can unlock the necromancer. Now the class selection is much more traditional. So if I go to click play, I'm prompted to choose a class here, and I can choose the knight, and then of course this is the necromancer here. Uh, you will not be able to play as the necromancer until you complete a successful run as the knight. So that's pretty standard as far as roguelikes go. So then I can click choose and start my playthrough there. The summoning circle has been moved here. Again, this is placeholder art. Um, so that is no longer locked behind an additional door of progression. Now with the class-based system, this new class system, uh, we have this abandon run button now, which if I click that, it'll count down from two, and then I can say click to confirm abandon. It'll give me my overview of what happened during that run, and then I can go back to the main menu and I can click play and start a new run there. Additionally, the other major change that was made is the path system. So the way the path system works is the first time that I enter level one, I will be prompted with this screen that says choose a path. Now each level in the path system will have a modifier that changes how the that level behaves. So if I look over here, I can see at level one on this path, gold will be more abundant, same as over there. Um, going down the list, I can see this one. Level 6 and multiple bosses are spawned at the end of the level, um, which is not necessarily a good one. But then we have some other ones like ability cooldown is, re is reduced, which will be beneficial. Um, looking over here, killing keepers restores less health. That's not a good one to have. But you can see how there's a, there's a bunch of different modifiers that can change how the levels play out. If I don't like these options, there's a button down here for reforging, which will cost me 100 gold, and I will get two brand new path options. So once I've chosen a path, I'm locked into that path until I beat level 10. Uh, I can view my current path modifiers here by pressing P on the keyboard. Um, that key is rebindable, so if you don't like that, you can change it. And the current path modifier is highlighted in green. So if I go into level one, I'll see that gold is more abundant and so on and so forth. So let's take a look at the Trello board and see what path modifiers are available specifically. All right, so in the path modifiers card here, so we have one that makes two final bosses at the end. Keepers will restore 75% of the health that they normally would. We have a legendary drop raise increased um, contains a valuable merchant, so that's one that we saw as well. Extra gold will drop, enemies have extra health, enemies heal over time, enemies are faster. We have this none path modifier, so there's nothing going on. We have enemies are weak, which means enemies are basically insta-kill. Uh, ability cooldowns are reduced. All loot drops at max level, so if you recall, only legendary loot is guaranteed to drop at the max level that it can drop for that dungeon level, um, but with this modifier, everything that drops will have the highest level possible for that stage. Okay, and then we have one where it contains more enemies, so more enemies will spawn, and then enemies deal more damage. So this system is pretty expandable as well. It's gonna be pretty easy to add more path modifiers as necessary. Uh, and then going over the Trello board some more, right now I'm working on the game trailer uh, for the Steam page listing. Um, and then looking at the next up, we have some additional art that needs to be done. Um, still waiting on the artist to be available for that. And we have a few polish items. We still have to polish up the legendary drop effect a little bit. Um, and then we have a couple bugs that need to be worked on. But yeah, beyond that, it's coming along well. Uh, the next steps are probably just to tackle these polish items and perhaps add more path modifiers as I think of them. But that is DevVlog15, so thank you guys for showing an interest in the game. You can check out the website in the description below to download an old alpha build, but you can get an idea of kind of how the game feels from that. Uh, I stream development Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. 
at twitch.tv slash firebelly. So I hope to see you guys on the stream and in the next dev vlog. Thanks again, and see you next time.